My brothers and my sisters, Good morning, we thank God for giving us a great day to put him before each and everything that we want to do and to thank him. In the spirit of the first reading, most of us have been wronged. Even yesterday before going to bed, your brother and sister wronged you. Even when you are coming here to the church, you are wronged by your brother and your sister. And St. Paul is telling us that when you are wronged by your brother and sister, do not retaliate. Do not hit back. He's also telling us that when you have a lawsuit to your brother, don't go and settle it among the unbelievers, but try to solve it among the believers. Many people, when we have a problem between you and your brother and sister, you go and wash your dirty linens, dirty sins, dirty mistakes in front of the unbelievers. You become a laughing stock to them. When you have a problem between you and your brother or and your sister, go and settle it. Two people. And if you cannot settle it, two people, invite a sister or a brother to help you settle it out. If it's impossible, go to the church where you worship. If not, then Jesus tells us, then regard that person as a pagan, as an believer. The most important thing is how do we react when you are wronged? Many times we eat back, we abuse, but the Christian life is calling us to forgive. Pray for the person who is wronging you. Once or twice, at the end of all, he may change. For the many times we have also been wrong, let us ask God to give us a big heart to pray for our brothers and our sisters. And for those who use wrong one another, even and then, let us stop it. Look at the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ and see how Jesus loves us all. And when you continue to wrong your brother and sister, you continue to crucify our Lord Jesus Christ. In the Gospel reading of today, we are meeting Jesus at prayer. Before Jesus Christ could do any important thing, he would go to pray. And when he was at, after the prayer, in today's Gospel, he chose the twelve whom he named the apostles. The twelve, the selection of the twelve, become the fruit of prayer. Before you make any decision in life, when you are going to class, when you are going to eat, when you are going for a journey, we are called upon to put God first in our life. Jesus was a prayerful Savior. And Jesus prayed for us even today. When we pray, let us also join Jesus in his prayer. If it were not for Jesus' prayer, and if it's not also for your prayer, where could we have been today? Let us love to pray. We are also being told many times that as fish cannot stay without water, neither can a Christian stay without prayer. As young as we are, as adult as we are, let us embrace a life of prayer. Prayer is important in our Christian life, in our Christian calling, in our education, in our day-to-day -day activities. Let us love to pray, imitating the life of Christ. The Lord be with you.